Our lesson for today will be looking at Mathematics 1512, that is Calculus A, and then we'll be looking at specifically the limit of this function as theta approaches zero. Let us start. So as usual, we know that the first thing that we need to do, we can direct substitute before doing anything, and then to check whether our answer will be valid or not. Now you can see that once we substitute 0 here, we are going to have a sine 0 over sine 0, and then we know very well that sine 0 is actually equals to 0. So you'll end up having 0 divided by 0, which is actually undefined. So in this case, we need to do something with this function before we can direct substitute. Now there are things that you should know, especially when you are dealing with a function that involves um, trigonometry, or let me say one of the trig ratios. You should know that the limit as, let us use x, approaches 0 of sine x over x, it's always equals to 1. So it means that if we have a certain angle here, divide by the very same angle here, then we have x approaching 0, you should know that it's equals to 1. And then we also have, um, when we have the reciprocal of this, you should also know that it's another identity which is equals to 1. So what we need to do with this one, we should try to form that identity. Now what we are going to do, our first step is to multiply this function by 1. But we know that each and every term divided by itself is equal to 1. So x divided by x is equal to 1. Um, theta divided by theta is equal to 1. So we are going to multiply by 1, but we are going to express 1 in terms of what we see here. So the first thing that we are going to do, we are going to multiply by 5 theta divided by 5 theta. We are guided by this. Then we multiply by 2 theta divided by 2 theta. That is the basic step that we should do. Now for the next step, we should understand the, ma the, the manipulation of um, numbers. Now let us look at this particular fraction. 2 over x multiplied by y over 3. We know that this is the same as we can just swap this to be y over x multiplied by 2 over 3. Or we can swap this. As long as we have a multiplication sign, it's okay. So we have 2 over 3 multiplied by y over x. It's the same thing. It's the same as 2 multiplied by 3, which is the same as 3 multiplied by 2. It doesn't matter the manner of which we write this, as long as we have a multiplication sign in between, we are actually good to go. So in this case, we are going to manipulate this. So we have limit as theta approaches 0. And then remember that the aim is to try and find this identity. So we can see that we can take this and swap it with this one. And then also take this such that it will be uh, the numerator of this. So we are going to have sine 5 theta divided by um, 5 theta. Multiply by, um, we have 2 theta divide by sine 2 theta multiply by 5 theta divided by uh, 2 theta so we can see that we still have um, our 1 and then we can see that this goes hand in hand with this and then we have this which goes hand in hand with this and then we have our function which is this and this 
so we haven't done anything to our function so in this case this will get rid of this then we know that this limit will apply to this and also apply to this um, also applies to this also but we can see that we don't have anywhere where you can substitute so we can see that the limit of this is the first identity that we talked about which is this one and then the second part of this which is the limit as theta approaches zero of this is our second identity which is this one so we can safely say this is 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 5 over 2. So 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 5 over 2, it's actually um, 5 over 2. So this is our answer to this question. I hope it makes sense. And it's also applicable to cos and tan. That's it for this lesson video. This is Bahula SJ. Thank you very much.